Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron Cichlids. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, as most of you know, this second facility behind me is done. Uh, we finished it just before the 1st of November. Uh, we were trying to rush and get some fish from outside inside before it started to get cold here in South Carolina. Hunter's done some videos uh, with walkthroughs inside. I've gotten a lot of uh, personal messages and questions on how the air is hooked up. Uh, understand that everything you see, except for the building and the spray foam and the air conditioning, uh, everything is done by us. Uh, we don't have any outside contractors coming in and doing that because, frankly, nobody knows how to build um, fish houses, you know, fish facilities. So I'm going to walk through just the air setup today for some of you that are either going to build some type of facility or you're running a lot of air pumps and you want a better solution. Um, so I'm going to explain this uh, in detail. So stay tuned. All right, so on that main building, we built a special box on the back. This one, I wanted to do something a little different. So in the back of the building, we b bought one of these sheds from Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, you know, outside garden equipment shed. Um, and it's worked out pretty well. So the electricity comes in from the side. And then there's holes in the back. Might be able to see. So that's where the air goes into the building from the blowers. So the blowers are going to be a little noisy. So when I open this, I'm going to step back and I'm going to explain this so you don't have to hear the noise as bad. All right, hopefully these doors will stay open. It's windy out. Nope, they don't want to stay open today. All right, so in here, I built a special, seriously beefy um, wood stand. I'm going to step back and let that door close. So there's two blowers in here, both uh, Pentair Aquatic, Sweetwater, uh, one and a half horse. We're only running one right now, it's that one over there. For everything that we do, we always have a spare, redundant one ready to go in case something happens. All we gotta do is change a couple valves, flip a switch, and we're good to go. So this one and a half horse um, is a two inch output PVC, runs the entire facility. Um, of course, there is electrical disconnects in here. Um, they look like little motorcycle engines. Those are the air filters. And then this time of the year, um, we run a space heater. And then we run an ink bird back here. What that does is it keeps the air in here warm. So I'm going to close it up. There. Now we don't have to hear it. So over here on the side, there is a um, dryer vent. That's where it draws in the air. There's a space heater inside that's hooked to an ink bird that keeps that air in there about 80 to 85 degrees. So the air that's being sucked up by the blower when it goes inside the facility is warm air, not cold air. So hopefully that explains the outside part. Um, I'm going to go on the inside and explain all the inside. Hey everybody, I'm inside now. Uh, nice and toasty in here. We keep it at 85 degrees. Um, so the air comes in right here. So right now, we're coming in through the first blower. So the air comes in. We make these manifolds. Um, these manifolds, uh, this one on the left is for one this is for the other. So you can see this one's turned off right now. Uh, you don't want any backflow going into that other um, blower. So it comes up, it goes in, and then these are the three zones uh, that we have set up. Zone one goes down this side. Try to do this slow. Zone two carries up, and then that's the main feed for the center double rows of tanks. And then zone three goes over there. 
this is a um, bleed off. So if Hunter comes in here and he has to catch some fish um, and he doesn't want to turn off the switch for the blower, he can just do this and right away the air is off. So see the bubbles? Okay. That's air on, all zones. So if he needs to come in and catch some fish over here, he'll just open that valve and boom, that quickly all the air is cut off to that entire, for that, it's the entire facility. If he wants to close off zone one or zone two or zone three, uh, he can do that. So let's say he's doing maintenance on zone two. He can just close zone two and boom. You know, the air starts to, it'll start to bleed off and then it's all gone you'll see a little bit lingering as the pressure in the line and then it'll just slow down. Alright, I turned their water back on, or their air back on, I'm sorry. Um, so pretty simple, um, the only other thing is is the switch. So this is blower one. If I want to run blower two, then I have to open this valve, I have to close this valve, and then I just turn on blower two and I'm good to go. Sometimes we like to rotate them, to rotate them periodically, um, but there's really no need to in our situation. So I'm turning these back off, <clears throat> turning this one back on, that quick, that easy. Um, this is a special relay. Um, that we have that goes outside. Uh, our very close friend Jim, um, electrical genius, so to speak. Um, we've got a, a, a high amperage relays on there, so it doesn't can't use a regular light switch. If you do uh, over time, that that switching is going to cause problems either with the motor or um, burn up the switch contacts. The switch contacts can't handle it. So. Um, that's about it inside uh, for the air. Um, if you want to see this part of it, I'll go in a little more depth, but it's on, it's on all of our videos that Hunter's put out. You know, the air comes down. You got the, all these little blue valves. And then the air comes down. So when you start dropping down four feet into these tanks with four feet of hose, you really need something stronger than an air pump. An air pump isn't, isn't going to cut it. Um, you're going to have to have a blower of some sort. So if you're running 10, 15, 20 gallon tanks, maybe you do this in the garage. Maybe you do it as a small time breeder, small hobby, basement breeder, garage breeder, whatever, whatever you want to classify it as. then look into getting a blower. They make them uh, 110, 220, uh, even make them 480. Um, we run 220 because it's more efficient on uh, current. You can easily get a blower down to like a quarter horsepower. Um, the only difference is, is you plumb it with PVC and then you don't use the air hose until you get to the very end where it drops into the tank. Um, much more efficient, much quieter, much less current. Um, current draw, which means your electricity bill, and just overall, um, so much easier and so much efficient to use than a, a linear air pump or a piston air pump or any of those that get hot uh, or the diaphragm wears out. Um, some of those really nice ones like the Alitas could run 200 300 500 800 dollars depending on the size, and you can get a quarter horsepower blower for you know, three, four hundred dollars, depending if you want to get a, um, a Chinese import one. Um, they have some from Taiwan. Um, a lot of those are really good for the price. Uh, and then you can move up into like the Sweetwater Pentair products. Uh, they cost more, um, but they just come with a much better quality product. Um, but realistically, you can have a blower for a couple hundred dollars and you can run. 10 to 30 tanks, 50 tanks, just depends on the size of the blower you get. So 
look into those. They're called regenerative blowers. Um, Gemco has them. Gemco has their own line of them. We use them outside uh, for our grow outs. Um, real good people over at Gemco. Um, real helpful. If you need help uh, figuring out what size blower you would want or need for your application, because they're going to ask for you know the drops. You can see over my shoulder. Um, that's called a drop wherever you see an airline hose coming down. They need to know that distance. Um, they're very helpful. Um, the products that they have are um, really good. They don't make them big enough for our you know, application on the big buildings, but they do make um, some smaller ones, like some three-quarter horses that we use outside, and they're literally five, six hundred dollars, and we run, you know, 20 totes of these IBC totes. We run 20 of those off of one of those um, blowers, and they're not big power consumers. You know, like I said, you can get one that's 110. That's easy for most people. Uh, just plugs in the wall. 220, kind of you need a you know a special plug or you need to have a, an outlet for 220, you know like your dryer outlet or um, um, your um, water heater outlet. Those are all 220s in a normal home where your your wall outlets are 110. So you can have a dedicated wall outlet. You can you can run a blower, um, and then it's just PVC. Um, just about everybody can you know utilize PVC. It's easy to work with. Um, you cut it, you prime the end, you glue it, you use fittings and couplers. Just make sure you go to a pretty good size. Uh, we run two inch on these blowers. Uh, if you go to a smaller blower, you can get away with one inch or one and a quarter or one and a half. Um, you don't want to force it in a very small um, uh, inside diameter type pipe because it's going to get warm. It's going to get hot. It's uh, friction. It's not under the same type of pressure as the water is. So just remember that when you're looking at blowers. Um, hopefully that helps you guys um, and explains blowers. Blowers are really easy. It's just a motor and that motor is sucking in air um, through those uh, air filters that you saw and then it blows it out the other end. Um, and if you do this on a somewhat I, well, I don't want to say professional, but, but professional level is 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 a is a applicable word. But if you do this enough, you should consider a, a spare for everything that you have, regardless if you're running a big air pump or you're running a blower. You need to have a spare, even if you don't have it wired up or connected into the system. Have it in a box, sitting in the shed or in the closet, because the if and when the day comes where something like that fails. You can't go down to the PetSmart or any store, or you can't even go to Walmart or uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. You can't go and pick one of these up. It's something that you have to order, maybe a week or so before you get it. So my recommendation is have a spare. Um, if you've got enough fish tanks, having a $300, $400 spare blower, spare pump, spare motor, whatever you want for your system is probably one of the smartest things you can do. Um, even if you don't use it, it's better to have it there. I, I look at it like a fire extinguisher. I hope I never need a fire extinguisher. hope I never need to use it. But if I do, it's there. Um, I look at blowers the same way, heaters. Um, a, a lot of our equipment, we're on a redundancy system for that uh, purpose. And um, it saved our ass a few times, trust me. I had a blower go out a um, month and a half ago. Don't know what happened to it. Turned it all off, it was in the middle of the night, that's why we have ring cameras and, and uh, everything in here. We noticed we didn't have any air, we came in, figured out it was the blower. All we did was change some valves over, flip a switch, boom, facility had air again, we're good to go. Next day, um, I troubleshot what was going on with it, um, figured out that I had some melted wires and uh, dealt with the company, company's going to warranty it and fix it, but I have a spare. so. If I didn't have that spare, it, it would not have been a good situation because I would have had to send it back for repair. I would have had to wait for it to get sent back and that could have been two, three, four weeks. So make sure if you really, really care about your fish and you do this, you, you, you're a breeder of any level, 10 tanks, 20 tanks, 50 tanks. Um, if you want to run a blower, to run a spare. So I know I beat that horse to death. I'm sorry, but it's just something that 
it kind of has to it kind of has to be reminded people don't think about it they've got wet dry filters at the house they're running their big 300 gallon tank and they don't have a spare pump and that's not something you can go to PetSmart and buy maybe you've got a 3,000 gallon per hour submersible $300 pump in your in your sump well you should have a spare it should be in a box sitting under the tank or in a closet or something so at nine o'clock on Friday when it fails if it fails then you, you've got a you've got a solution so your fish aren't suffering if not you've got to get online you've got to order it on Friday probably not going to get it till Wednesday the next week by then you've got five days that your tank hasn't been running so do yourself a favor save a few pennies buy spares for the important parts of your aquarium so I'm gonna say goodbye uh, hope you guys have a great weekend and um, if you all want any other videos or you want any in-depth videos on any specifics of this facility uh, please comment reach out to us and we will do our best to get you a, a video pertaining to, uh, to pertaining to that. So, again, thank you um, from Ron, Hunter, Ronnie, everybody here at Ron Cichlids. We appreciate every one of you. Uh, we would not have been able to grow to the point we are today uh, if it wasn't for all of you. And uh, we love all of you and appreciate you guys following along. Have a great day.